Hey guys, I'm Dave. Welcome back to the Power Wagon Restoration Vlog, Episode 6. Today I'll be taking you moment by moment through the ninth month of restoration, which occurred during the month of November 2020. So, stick around. You're watching Parts and Restoration. Well, this is like the very first time I've stopped to take a break all day long. These are, uh, this is one of the running boards for the truck. Came with the truck on the yellow cab truck when I bought it. Um, I stripped this thing down. All of the uh, nasty tar was like all underneath this thing. It was disgusting. It took forever. You can see my floor is just completely trashed, covered in, in nasty from running this, running tools all day. I just finally got these to the point where I prime them. Um, but I gone through and gotten these down to bare metal. And like I said, all that freaking tar just was caked in every one of these little freaking pockets. This little, like the raised texture on here. Unfortunately, these aren't in like, they're in, in good shape. But they've got a little bit of a little bit extra character i guess that i wish wasn't there but that's fine um and then these are the brackets that hold them up i sandblasted these which took forever because my sandblaster's causing having some problems it's been a crazy day i was able to finish this up today too this is the uh the radiator and the fan shroud and as you remember from the other day i had to rebuild this radiator shroud from here down this is all a replacement panel and uh i'm really proud of it uh, I mean, you know, it's not, like I said, it's not perfect. It's difficult to tell. I think now that it's painted, that it is a, a replacement part, especially when you're looking at it as a unit. But uh, it works, and it's back on the truck, or will be back on the truck shortly. It looks nice. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Anyway, thanks for watching. You guys have a great night. So the only camera on my phone that works is a selfie cam, so this is how we're doing this. Busy day in the shop. I got the running boards back on the truck, or at least the frontmost running boards. I am waiting on some mounts to come in, although I have the rear actual steps. Um, I started bleeding the brakes, and I found that there was a fitting missing in my master cylinder. Let's see if I can aim that. This right here um, was squirting uh, fluid out of that top uh, threaded opening. I tried to plug it, and that didn't work. So I have to get a proper fitting for that, and then we can proceed. Um, I cleaned this place, like I'd mentioned. I found the floor, which is fantastic. It was just getting awful in here. But I also sandblasted the headlights today. They are rougher than I in anticipated, but definitely salvageable. They're definitely gonna be salvageable because they're really expensive to buy new or refurbished. So reinstalled the radiator and I mounted the fan shroud in here and I just put this whole thing in to check clearances and it fits fits perfect no rubbing no issues uh, I'm gonna finish bolting this in and I've got I actually take the entire thing off it's really just to check clearances because I need to order some more bolts it's like a specialized nut that goes into here it's like um it's like a nut with a little like a small like inside diameter flange that kind of plugs large hole it's it's a weird fitting i can't find one on mcmaster car i think it must be some kind of proprietary fitting anyway things are about to get real interesting i'm making battery cables right now and i'm battery cables expensive so i'm not gonna just make temporary cables i want to make them the right length and some of the parts need to butt up against the firewall on the cap so what are we gonna do i'm putting the cap back on If you didn't know I was super weird by now, it's kind of on you. Anyway, the cab looks great. Forget how tall these trucks are, just because I've had the cab off for so darn long. I'm 5'11", and six foot with my crazy hair right now. It's a truck, major stance. Um, you really do have to step up tall to get in these things, but boy, does it look cool. My goodness, I cannot wait. Things like this just really recharge my batteries. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous machine. Anyway to work. All right, guys, I'm trying to figure something out and I'm running out of luck. I need some help. Have a look. Inside here, we've got our battery hooked up to the engine. And here is our starter solenoid. When I turn the key, I get nothing. However, if I jump over the solenoid, I get ignition or I get some cranking. Um, the battery, or the wires that are hooked up to this, this one, it goes to the, um, goes to it, hold on one second. 
fixed it. Going hands free. Oh, starter fluid. This looks like some uh, arson stuff right here. This is a uh, forced four cycle fuel. I made myself a little fuel line that I brazed onto a fitting that's now in here. It's sketchy, but it'll work for now. I figured it out! Fast kicking glory right now. Beautiful thing. Anyway, that's a night. My neighbors are going to kill me if I keep on screwing with this thing. But anyway, I'm going to stick around here just to make sure this thing doesn't light on fire. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. What's up, people? I got to tell you, using this selfie cam for everything really sucks. I got to get my phone repaired. Anyway, check this out. Kind of some shit news. Can we see that giant puddle of oil on the floor here? That's from like one startup for like 15 seconds. This giant sandcastle here is um, sawdust that I had to throw down in some oil from last night's startup. Issue is my rear main seal is not So that means I have to pull the engine, uh, which is not that big of a deal because all this stuff is obviously just temporary. And check my rear main seal. It's a rope style seal. So that's putting me already behind the eight but there are these little rubber pieces that go on the outer, outermost edge of that rear main seal that are like sealing whatevers. I might have forgot to put those in. Anyway, enough of screwing around with the leaky engine. I'm working on the transfer case. Just taking its component parts, uh, separating them out, and getting them clean. Of course, my solvent parts washer takes a huge dump right when I need it most. Um, Something about the float switch is not working properly, which really, really sucks for the pump. But um, anyway, I've been sandblasting parts, painting parts as they come out of the blaster, just getting everything squared away. Um, let's see this. Side note, side quest. This is a um, elbow for the coolant system that had a big hole in it, and I tried a braze repair on there. Super thin sidewall. I don't know how I didn't blow all of this apart, but I didn't. And I think it actually might be solid. I'm still going to replace this, but I just was fucking around. If you didn't notice from my voice and my haggard appearance, I kind of feel like shit. Uh, I'm sick. And uh, I'm going to go and get some lunch and maybe take the rest of the day off because uh, I feel like crap. Anyway, thanks for following along. How about that engine startup, huh? Oh, oh. Those of you who've been following along this whole build process, this is the coolest thing I've ever done. Uh, I remember being a little boy and asking my dad, hey, dad, can we build an internal combustion engine or like an engine, I think I said. And he was like, oh, you know, that's, that's, we can't, you can't do that. You got to be a mechanic or an engineer. Well, I fucking built an engine. I mean, I didn't make it, but I like, I put it there. Legos are cool, right? You know, you can make stuff and still claim it. I'm claiming this thing. I fucking built that. I uh, I'm sick and uh, I'm going to go and get some lunch and maybe take the rest of the day off because uh, I feel like crap. Anyway. Thanks for following along. How about that engine startup, huh? Oh, oh. So I got some more good video. I got the, the cameras back in the shop, so I'm making some YouTubeage. I am so fucking stoked, you guys. Those of you who've been following along this whole build process, this is the coolest thing I've ever done. Uh, I remember being a little boy and asking my dad, hey, dad, can we build an internal combustion engine or like an engine, I think I said? And he was like, oh, you know, that's, that's, we can't, you can't do that. You got to be a mechanic or an engineer. Well, I fucking built an engine. I mean, I didn't make it, but I like, I put it there. Legos are cool, right? You know, you can make stuff and still claim it. I'm claiming this thing. I fucking built that. I fucking built that. Anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Take it easy. That little ditty leads into today's work. Um, I've been working on the transfer case all day long doesn't really look like much because I didn't sandblast it. It's too big to fit in my blast cabinet um, effectively. It would fit, but it would just take up the entire space and it weighs a zillion pounds. It would collapse the, the work table inside of the box, inside of my, my sandblaster cabinet. 
Um, I've cleaned everything thoroughly. I've taken everything apart. And now um, I've gotten all of the crud off out of all the nooks and crannies. The insides have been cleaned thoroughly. And uh, I just stopped and everything, I mean, look at this. Like a top. Didn't really help on my part, just needed to be cleaned. It was fine before. Um, I put new seals in, I bought a, a gasket kit. And um, yeah, just gonna hit it with brake cleaner, paint it, call it a day. Great success, very nice. Man, isn't that cool? Got that installed just fine. Getting ready to paint this thing. Life is good. Divorce transfer case. The happiest of all transfer cases because it's away from you know who. Anyway, <laughs> so I stripped this entire thing today. It's clean. It's been repainted at uh, Eastwood uh, Platinum Rust Encapsulator. Its mounts are painted. Can you see that? I hate this selfie cam. Jesus, I really need a new phone. Um, I painted some drive shafts today. I got my intermediate, or my medium shaft and my long dong shaft here. In the sandblaster for tomorrow or is the little tiny shaft that goes from the transmission to the transfer case. So I'm going to get that up and running. Guys, this is this truck is just now that I'm kind of at this point like I was looking on my 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 parts rack over here to see if I had anything else that needed to be like rusty that was need to be rust encapsulated. I got nothing. I'm almost done. Like I'm moving. Evening gang. This is the only way I can shoot front facing without the camera going nuts. Thanks for turning your screen. Transfer case. This has been all dialed up. Um, the inside is nice and clean, rebuilt, ready to go back to work. Put new gaskets on this thing. May at some point put new seals on it. I gotta see if it leaks or not. I don't really feel like spending the money, um, but I think it should be fine. Um, all of my propeller shafts got redone. It's another one up here, the big boy. And then tonight, I've just been going through getting all of the linkages primed, or sandblasted and primed rather. These are all of my universal joint, I guess they call them shackles, I'm not sure. But all the hardware, Getting those all cleaned up, primed, and painted. I sandblasted all of them. These are the rubber mounts that mount the transfer case box to the frame. As you can see, that would mount right under here, under this hump. New box of parts came in from Vintage Power Wagons. These are, these U-shaped guys here are the rear mounts for my running boards. So I was taking a look at the running boards tonight. And this is one that joined front and rear sections, came with the bed, and it's all patched up. Some farm boy did a decent enough job putting this thing back together and, and fixing the rust holes. These get rusty around here because there's a piece of wood that actually contacts, you know, from the factory, a piece of uh, hardwood that holds that in place. So it got a little rotty there. I'm actually going to have to cut that plate out. And there's not a whole lot of damage. Ugh. Oh goodness. On the other side, we've got like one, two, that's a proper hole, three little holes that just need to get patched. Tiny, tiny little repair. Aside from that, this thing is solid. And um, what I'm gonna And the plan really is to just cut right along this seam here, which is where they're joined. They're joined with a couple of spot welds where I pinch that flange edge together. Really, really easy. I'm gonna cut this crappy patch out. It's down, it's it's below the surface and I'm just going to do a cut and butt style um, repair on that. If you watch Fitzy's Fabrication on YouTube, if you're learning about sheet metal repair, that's the guy to go to. He makes it really easy, but I can fix this. I may even use this piece of steel. It's a good piece of steel. It's actually profiled properly. It just isn't, it's just too low. Yeah, easy fix. Anyway, that's what I'm working on tonight and uh, that's about all I got from you guys for now. I'm enjoying this kind of Video style, movie style, story time. What do you guys think? Should I keep on doing this? Turn your screen warning and then shoot a cool sideways video? I'm into it. Here's the PTO that came with the parts truck. And I don't think this is the stock PTO for this particular truck. Um, I've just played musical PTO for the last two hours trying to figure out exactly how to configure the inside of the PTO so that I could actually make the handle, the lever, work properly on it. 
Um, long story short, after all that musical PTO, as I said, it doesn't fit properly. I was able to put the shaft in the top. There's like two holes that the top shaft can go into, or that the shaft can go into. And it really needs to go in the bottom one, and I can't figure out the proper way to set the handle on the side, the throw lever, for it to engage and disengage without it not working. So I'm probably just going to have to bite the and buy a proper one, which sucks because they're expensive. What's going on, guys? So I'm starting to mock up the uh, running boards here. And uh, this was one that I completely removed all paint from, did some body work on, and uh, there was some major damage right along here. You may have seen the previous video where you could see there was a patch in there. I made myself a new patch panel uh, out of some existing running board that I'm not gonna be using that was extra. So I'm gonna do a cut and butt um, and weld that in. And I'm probably gonna just make this into one giant panel, do a nice weld, fill it right in through there. Make this one giant piece. Um, and I've completely destroyed the floor in the shop from all that cleaning work. Here are two running boards that I'm working with. This is another rear uh, running board that's gonna be used on the truck as a rear. And this is a, an extra front one. This came with the truck. I showed you guys this in a story the other day. Here's where I harvested that patch panel. From. I'm gonna use some more metal from this since it's the same thickness. Um, and I'm just gonna butcher this thing a little bit and get parts that I need from it so that I can get these all run up. I need to make a nice flange for right in here between these two points um, because these are essentially spot welded together. Um, I don't have a spot welder, I'm, I'm gonna be doing plug welds. But um, yeah, as you can see, I totally trashed the floor. Running these tools today, getting these clean. Um, what else? I love the lighting in the shop with the lights off at about midday. It's just really chill when the sun's shining. There's a cool vibe. Um, it's kind of cold, but you get the nice warmth of the sun coming in. It's just a beautiful place. Uh, I wound up dropping the oil pan underneath the truck and making a bit of a mess to figure out what was going on with my rear main seal here. Um, I have pretty much diagnosed the problem as related to the rope seal, um, but unfortunately when I run the truck, it sprays oil everywhere. It just dumps out the back of the rear main seal. So that's not gonna be sustainable. So I'm figuring out a solution for that. I've got feelers out with the Power Wagon Owners community on Facebook, and uh, they, those guys usually help me out a lot. Anyway, I'll go off to work shortly. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Okay, here we have two running boards that I have tack welded in place on the underside on the flange that I have done a root pass and like some cleanup passes somewhat. It's still ugly as shit, but to join the two tops, that should hopefully be one plane after I grind it or I'll grind it till it's flat and clean one plane. And then this is that repair panel. And as you maybe can see, it is dead flush on the top. I'm just getting it tacked in. Every single time I make a weld, I stop, use my uh, adjustment device here to pry and raise and lower the sides until they're totally flat. And then I zip them real quick. So this will give a nice appearance when it's done. Yeah, welding. Okay, here's the fruit of the cut and butt technique. Literally, all you do is you place your patch panel on top of what you want to repair. You weld it in, cut little bits out of it at a time, realign the surfaces, and when you're done, you take out the piece that you're replacing. There's no fitting up or any difficulties with that. Uh, I learned this on Fitzy's Fabrication on YouTube. It's an incredible technique. It's just a total game changer. Well, here it is, warts and all. There's the repair, obviously. Um, I still need to do some more grinding, and I'm going to do a little bit of body filler on this just to get it really tuned up. But, like I said, imperfect. But this is the first time I'm doing a project like this. It's mine. I'm owning it. And I'm getting better each time. So there's the site of my repair panel, my repair patch. 
and then I came in here and welded this all in. Got to do a little bit more cleanup in here. Um, because it looks like trash still. This actually looks decent, I think, for my skill level, which is pretty low, but, um, it stays pretty flush. It's, again, not perfect, but it's, there's no really major, you know, going with the fingernail. A couple of hooks there. Not too bad, though. All right, we're all welded up. This joint that I've created here is strong as shit. Um, I definitely would trust it uh, to stomp up and down on this thing right now. Anyway, Bondo is in place. I've never really used Bondo before in any really restoration work, maybe a little bit here and there. And earlier on my truck heater, I tried it out for the first time. But I'm gonna give this a shot here to see if it, how well this levels out the surfaces here. Just kind of experimenting, you know, I'm trying to get ready and pulled up with my knowledge base for the big project, which I've yet to even look at yet. So I guess it'll cure in like 15, 20 minutes and then I'll sand it and see what it looks like. Okay, all bondoed in and sanded down. This is just an experiment. I'm not really going full crazy with this. I just wanna see what it looks like. A little bit of paint on it, a little bit of primer on top. Just see how well it comes in. I think if I was taking this a little more seriously, I would probably do another pat, do some more sanding before I did this and fill some more of these spots up. I can already see a little high spot right here where I need to knock that back down, but. Yeah, I mean, not bad, guys. Considering I've never done this before and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, definitely some, some high and low spots in through here. Uh, my dad always talks about like red lead putty. Like, does that ring any bells to anybody? Um, for little stuff. Maybe I should look for some of that shit. Thoughts on the red lead? They still make that? Anyway, too bad for just screwing around. And um, this thing is a solid, solid piece. Definitely like one monolith now. Let's take a look at the bottom. So, there's that repair patch. There are those two flanges that are, that are um, plug welded together. And there's my one piece. Not too shabby, I'd say. We were here, now we're on the other side, and this was one of the steps that I was given, and it didn't have a flange here. Now this flange, and this flange, that's full of holes, should be spot welded together, and that's how you make that initial joint. Um, fortunately, I don't have to do any more major repairs on here, but once that's done, I'll just go in through like I did on the other one, and just weld these two together on the top end and make them look like one solid piece. And um, hindsight 2020, it's a lot of extra work, but uh, I like the way it looks, or I like the way that it will look when it's done. One final test for all the glory. Can it withstand a step from the big guy? A little bouncy bounce. Yep, that's good to go. That is a good feeling after a long day of work. People, we're checking boxes today. This is epic. Follow with me. We've got a brake pedal, which is attached to a master cylinder. I've been trying to bleed the brakes, but every time I did, this hole right here, as you can see, there's fluid on it, was leaking fluid everywhere. I didn't know what to put in there. Someone reached out to me and told me that on this particular more modern master cylinder, the brake light switch is actually supposed to install there. On power wagons, there's a T in the brake line where that's supposed to install. So what have I done? I took the old, old one out of the parts truck, the old switch thing that threads in, and I plugged the hole. So now I can bleed my brakes. Moving forward, people, this is great. Anyway, thanks for following along. Next step shortly.
the more astute among you will have noticed that the engine is gone. Yeah, I lost it. I, I don't even know what to say. That is a brake pedal that does more than just look cool. Ladies and gentlemen, witness. Okay, and... Mother of God. Well, as you can see, there's a couple high shot, high shiny spots on this thing. Not getting good contact. So what are we gonna do? I'm just gonna lap it, gonna lap it, get a new good bearing surface, throw it back on, see if it leaks. For all of the guys in the automotive industry who are about to comment, oh, you should just throw it out and get a new one. You're completely right. Yes, my old friend. Okay, next troubleshooting option is to lap this banjo fitting, which is actually where the brake line goes into, and then pushes up against the uh, wheel cylinder. So this is just the next step up. Well, that last attempt didn't work either, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock all the corners down on this just a little bit, so to make sure they're not interfering with the ceiling surface. And I just said F you to that uh, banjo attachment, and I've got another one. I'm gonna try out, see if that one works better. Well, good news and bad news. I killed the brake system. That last one brake that I was having an issue with, um, I wound up stripping out the banjo fitting. It's brass, so it's soft. Um, so that's shot, and there's fluid all over the floor now. But I have three really solid conditions on the other ones that have been um, not leaking for the last hour or so. Um, earlier today, I pulled the engine out to give myself some access, and I've made that final fuel connection so I can hook the uh, fuel pump right into the fuel system, and that's solid and I'm going to test it out soon um, but so I need to order another uh, banjo fitting which is that last final connection between the brake system and the actual wheel um, wheel cylinder but uh, kind of just checking some small boxes and wrapping this up real fast so anyway um, big progress today and um, learning a lot brakes weren't too bad life is good see you guys tomorrow this is pretty cool. This is the PTO unit that goes on my power wagon. I actually ordered this on eBay for a song. It was great. I got a great deal on it. And um, when I got it, it was completely seized up. All the, It had been sitting in a shed apparently for 20 years, according to the seller. And uh, all the moving parts were seized. But I just put a little bit of oil on these parts and kind of got them moving and lubricated up. And just started getting to play with this a little bit. So normally there's a giant lever that hinges here actuates this um this like selector here so you've got neutral uh forward and reverse on this so there's neutral and there's forward but anyway as you can see here this gear meshes with the transmission and when it's in gear you've got forward drive and then on the other end reverse you can see the shaft output is different than the input on here pretty neat little uh piece of kit well, this is just the icing on the cake. While I was looking over some of my Eastwood stuff, this shipment came from Vintage Power Wagons. A couple parts I've been waiting on to get my engine buttoned up. Uh, new thermostat. Um, this is the neoprene new style rear seal. The rope seal that I had initially installed in there, just spraying oil all over the floor, no good. Springs to rebuild the handbrake on my transfer case. This is a spacer bar for the winch. Uh, this is like a, block for uh, headlights and front turn signals. These are all these little locking doohickeys for, um, gee, where do these go? Oh, these are all for the U-bolts that like are the U connectors that hook the universal joints uh, in place. Um, that doesn't make sense, but that's fine. Sort of a specialized step bolt for the transmission cover, and this is a uh, plug that goes in the uh, drag link on the uh, steering as part of the steering assembly, basically. Anyway, these were kind of like some of the last mechanical parts I needed to get my power wagon mechanically squared away, and I'm really stoked that they're here. If I had more energy right now, I would be like flying to the shop to do it, but I absolutely punched all my fun tickets out working on that engine today. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your night, and I'll talk to you soon. You know, it's funny. I said I wasn't going to do any more work on that Plymouth, but working on that engine today, uh, it actually felt really Yeah, I'm, I'm over it. I need a break uh who can relate to that i'm sure guys top of the morning
You guys, seriously? You see that rubber piece right there? That's the upper rear main seal. And I thought I was gonna have to take the entire engine apart to put it in, but it just slipped right in. Slipped. This is the other piece for the lower piece of the rear main seal, and it just it just slipped in. It just slipped. Slipped right in with a little slippery lubricant. Slipped. Well, today was kind of a crappy day at the shop. I basically got nothing done today. Uh, I, put, I put the engine back into the frame and connected the fuel system to the pump. I'm still waiting on a couple connections to bridge the gap between the pump and the carburetor and that up top filter. Um, I did make <laughs> a new hose. I mounted the rear mounts on the engine. Felt, you know, it's, it took me like three freaking seconds. Um, couple things with the transfer case. I got these nuts wired up with some mechanic wire and um, started cleaning these new old stock uh, universal joints. They had like solid frozen grease in there. I had to clean all that out. It took me about an hour and a half just to do one, which really sucked. Um, yeah, today was kind of a day where I just sort of wandered around with my uh, head hanging, feeling bad for myself, but that's going to happen. And uh, tomorrow. Well, since I've been working on the shop all day, I figured I'd give myself one small victory on the truck. This is the drag link, which connects the steerable front axle to the steering gears. And this is a drag link dust cover, which was packaged in August of 1973. This thing has got some age to it, at least as far as I'm concerned, as a young buck. Oh, look at this. Boy, the paper this component was packed in is extremely high-tech. Got all kinds of tech specs on here, heat seal, it's moldable, uh, very interesting. Anyway, this is the drag link dust cover. Got a felt piece here that seals in all the flavor. I've already installed one of them. Basically, there's a bit of movement that happens in there. There's an exposed open spring and greased fitting that this kind of just seals it all up nice and tight. This one's going to go on here, and as you can see, this is military issue uh, for the Dodge M37, but most of the components on this are interchangeable, uh, at least to some degree. I don't always choose to use my wrench from hand tool rescue, but when I do, I file it under screwdriver handles. <laughs> this is what happens when you stop teaching shop class in American high schools. Ah, uh, the little things in life like seeing something through to the end even like a small victory is a lot to recharge the battery sometimes when you've had a long day i'll take it have a great night guys talk to you tomorrow if you like that video take some time to check out my other ones i have no idea what i'm doing but i usually figure it out thanks for watching